protected ports. In this video, you and I get to identify what this feature does, how to implement it, and how to verify it's working. Let's begin. I'd like to introduce you to switch number one. Now in this case, it's the only switch that we have in our topology, and on port number two, we have a malicious host. It's running Backtrack or Kali or some other kind of penetration testing tool. And it's come to our attention that this attacker is starting to attack this PC, which is connected to port number four. Now, both of these ports are in VLAN 123, so they're in the same broadcast domain. And as a result, they're also on the same subnet. And what we've been asked to do is to isolate the attacker from the PC so they can't communicate directly with each other. Now, depending on our switch, we have several options. We could use port-based access control lists. We could use private VLANs. But the simplest method to implement isolation between port 2 and port 4 so they can't talk directly with each other is a feature called protected ports. It's also often called private VLAN edge. And it's a really good technique if we need to make sure that two or more ports on a given switch don't have direct access to each other. So here's how protected ports work. We'll go to interface configuration for port 2 and for port 4, and we'll simply tell both of those interfaces, both of those ports, that they are protected ports. And as a result, they will not be able to communicate with each other. So if we had 40 ports and we configured all of them as protected ports, those 40 ports would not be able to communicate with each other. Now, of course, it's very likely we have a default gateway configured for this subnet. And what we would do is simply leave that router port alone. We're not going to configure the router interface as a protected port. And the reason for that is because if we configured the attacker, the PC, and the router all on protected ports, none of them would be able to communicate with each other. So by leaving the port that goes to the router as a normal port, a non-protected port, devices on this subnet, including the PC, will be able to communicate with the router because a protected port is allowed to communicate with a non-protected port. So if this is a little table regarding the possibilities, and this is port A and this is port B, Two non-protected ports are going to have successful communication. A protected port and a non-protected port are going to have successful communication. It's only when we have two protected ports where you're going to have this buzzer sound, <laughs> where there's no communications allowed between those two ports because they are both protected. Let's do a couple of quick checks on our network to verify connectivity before we implement protected ports. On the Linux box, the attacker device on port 2, if we do an IF config, it shows us that the IP address is 10.123.0.3. And because I know a lot of you will want to practice with protected ports in a test environment, let me go back to the switch and on ports 2 and port 4, let me go ahead and default both of those interfaces so that we can all start from the same place. Next, let's go into those two interfaces. I'm going to use an interface range command, so I can use the command once, and it'll apply both to gig 0 slash 2 and 0 slash 4. 0 slash 4 is where the PC is. 0 slash 2 is where the attacker Kali Linux box is. And let's specify that those ports are going to be access ports, and let's go ahead and put them into VLAN 123. And that way we have a good starting place. Both ports are in the same broadcast domain, the same VLAN. And we'd also want to verify they both have an IP address in the same subnet. So I'm using a router as a DHCP server. So on that DHCP server, let me do a show IP DHCP binding. They'll simply show us the IP addresses that it's handed out. So this address is the Kali Linux box that's on port gig 0 slash 2 on the switch. And this address, 10.123.0.4, is the IP address that's been assigned to the PC that's sitting on port number 4 of that switch. And just for grins, let's go ahead and verify back on the Kali Linux box that we can actually ping from ourselves at dot .3 over to dot .4. And that's why we test it before we implement the security. So the PC at 10.123.0.4 had gone into sleep mode. I just hit enter. It woke itself back up. Let's go ahead and try that ping again. So we'll do a ping with a count of 5 to 10.123.0.4. <laughs> and that looks a lot better. Now we're getting a response from that PC. So our next step is to implement protected ports on the switch for ports 2 and port 4. That'll prevent the Kali Linux box on port 2 from being able to directly communicate with port 4 where the PC is. So we'll go back to our switch. And on the switch, we'll go into interface configuration range for 0 slash 2 and 0 slash 4. And we'll use the command switch port space protected. Poof! That's it. Those two ports are now protected ports. One way of verifying that is with a show command. We'll do a show interface of gig 0 slash 2 with the keyword switch port. 
And if we look right here at the third line from the bottom, it shows us that regarding the protected state, it is true. So any two protected ports will not be able to directly communicate with each other. So to verify that that's working, let's go back to our Kali Linux box. And the ping that worked just a few moments ago, we use the up arrow key and ping again. And now the switch is no longer allowing traffic between port 2 and port 4. So all of these pings from the Kali Linux box going over to the PC should fail. Now on the other hand, if we use the up arrow key and we change this to the default gateway address of 10.123.0.1, the default gateway is not on a protected port, and as a result, the ping to that device should work. And there's the five pings successfully making it up to the default gateway. I have had a great time, and I'm glad that you joined me for this video. If you're interested in these types of videos, you may want to check out some other courses up at CBT Nuggets. If you're not yet a member, we have a free seven-day trial. Again, I appreciate you watching. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.